Well, I'm here at Parc Regional Gentilly for some winter camping in the new year, 2023. And I have with me Victor Jacob, who actually joined us last year. We met through the Alto group on Facebook. Uh, he also has an Alto, but a different model. And he pulls with his Tesla Model 3. And he's gonna to talk to us about that experience and the tweaks he's made on his vehicle and the trailer to get greater distance and more safety. Tell me uh, what made you decide to switch from your previous tow vehicle, which was a Mercedes SUV diesel to a, a EV, a Tesla. I had been paying uh, a few thousand dollars a year in repairs and maintenance with a diesel. Um, and it was subject to a class action suit, uh, lots of repairs all related to emissions control. It was getting quite expensive um, to repair and to maintain and insure two different vehicles. And after some road testing at the dealership and my own uh, experiments with my own uh, set up vehicle, I realized that I was able to tow um, well with some limitations and caveats with my Tesla and I didn't have to have two vehicles to maintain, repair, and insure, and park. I tried out the dealer's set up Tesla with the same brand of trailer that I currently have before I committed to having the quite expensive modifications to my Tesla. When I took it out on a highway I felt it stable, I felt it very capable. Uh, they had lots of experience, lots of uh, mileage uh, with various tow vehicles that are below uh, the weight uh, in terms of rating, but certainly capable if they're properly set up and properly driven. My top speed is uh, never more than 90, 95 kilometers per hour and sometimes slower to be able to reach my next charger. Now, not only do you uh, tow with an EV, so we're going to talk about some of the challenges with that, but you also camp in winter as you are now. Uh, what's the uh, biggest challenge uh, towing and camping in winter with an EV? Uh, um, it's not as challenging to actually camp as long as you're at an electrical campsite and you have no worries about having enough power to recharge your vehicle or keep your camper warm or to cook with electricity. Uh, it's a challenge if you're off grid and you don't have a nearby charger and you have to drive, spend time and uh, range to get to the charger and you don't know how fast the charger is and how far away it is. But if you have electrical site, it's, it's a no brainer. Now winter towing is a different issue. You've got the challenge of the road surface, uh, towing through snow, rain, uh, gravel roads will drain your battery more. So you have to really manage your energy uh, very cautiously. Um, I've done a few modifications to the vehicle to improve my range. One of them is increasing the tire pressure to the ma almost maximum cold inflation pressure which is 51 versus the recommended pressure range by decreasing rolling resistance. I've upgraded my Alto tires to load range D that run at 65 PSI, up from the factory 50 PSI load range D. I found that it decreased my consumption from average of 350 watt hours per kilometer to just below 300 watt hours per kilometer. And that could make the difference between getting to your destination or not getting there and being very embarrassed to be flat bedded with your trailer and tow vehicle towed to the next charger, which uh, is not really a pretty sight. So walk us through uh, some of the other um, things you adapted to get better range and um, yes, I guess... Uh, more security yeah. you recently this past summer you did a huge trip actually from your home in ontario near toronto all the way to vancouver island yeah and um, that's quite a distance i'd yes. say it's probably almost four thousand kilometers or well my total trip 
from Toronto to Prince Rupert and then a ferry through the Inside Passage to Bear Cove at the north end of Vancouver Island uh, down to Tofino and across through Banff and Illinois back home that was 13,500 kilometers not once did I run out of power I came close but I didn't uh, there's a virtual Tesla charger desert once I got to Prince George and heading from Prince George West to Prince Rupert not one Tesla charger so I had to use an adapter that was thankfully lent to me by someone I connected with in Prince George um, they have generic chargers they're slower you need to have an adapter to plug into one of the generic chargers but they do work if you have the time which I do because I'm retired uh, taking two or three times the length of time to charge is not a big deal as long as you're prepared and patient and have the time to devote. Okay, now you uh, made a list, I see you holding it in your hand, yeah, yeah. of different things you wanted to share. So why don't we uh, run through the list? We may have covered one or two already. Okay, in terms of modifications to the car to improve winter range, I added EV Insulate, which is a foam insulation package that um, it helps to keep the battery warm takes less energy to condition the battery before charging and uh, it reduces the heat loss from the battery which is a, a, an amazing thief of range in in the winter 800 900 pounds of battery takes a lot of energy to keep warm at optimum operating temperature the insulation reduces the heat loss improves range uh, cabin uh, heating is also uh, a liability in terms of uh, battery reserve so I added um, polycarbonate panels called uh, uh, EV glass by the same supplier of the battery insulation package that also keeps my uh, cabin warmer with less uh, energy capital drainage um, I have a variety of adapters for various charging opportunities um, even the soon-to-be uh, discontinued Chatamo uh, adapter I have. I have an aftermarket CCS one adapter which is the universal standard. I have 15, 30 and uh, 50 amp uh, chargers that uh, or adapters that will plug into campground receptacles. I even have uh, a rather unusual adapter that will combine two nearby uh, 30 amp receptacles that run at 120 volts and will give me a 50 amp 240 volt receptacle to speed up the charging of my camper that only works of my Tesla that only works though if you have two adjacent uh, receptacles that um, uh, are not in use uh, and uh, they're usually uh, in opposite phases so uh, compatibility is not an issue and there are LED lights that will light up and confirm that uh, the phases are in proper sync so the amazing thing about these different adapters for the Tesla is that they have a built-in voltage uh, limiter or a amperage limiter and a temperature sensor if uh, the electrical system of the campground is overloaded and the voltage drops and the temperature increases um, these adapters will communicate with the onboard charger and the onboard charger will actually dial down the amperage so an adapter might be able to carry 24 amps at 120 volts but if the campground is strained then it will dial down the voltage the amperage to um, significantly less than 24 amps it might go to 15 or to 20 uh, if it needs to keep it cool uh, or in the summer if it's beating down the Sun is beating down on the charging post and it gets hot it'll dial down the amps as well um, it's very very smart charging capability so it, it keeps um, the cables and the charging posts from overloading so you don't have to be an electrical engineer you don't have to you just it's plug and play <laughs> so what are uh, the biggest challenges people need to consider 
if they want to purchase uh, an EV as a tow vehicle. Well, if ideal conditions include an accessible charger within a short distance, I can go 95 and be very comfortable. If I really have to stretch my range because my next charger is 160, 180 kilometers away, I will slow down to 80 kilometers per hour. I'll stick to the right lane, go to 80 kilometers per hour and um, just take my time. If I have a lot of fast, much faster moving traffic around me, I'll put my four-way flashers on if I'm going 80, you know, 100 or 110 zone and most people are good with that. Truckers, so, when they go uphill, they frequently slow down because they can't go any faster on steep right. uphill grades. I'm no different. So, um, do you have on your dashboard a way to monitor your consumption and and your estimated time? Oh, of, absolutely. Yeah. Um, first of all, I can only speak for Tesla. Other EVs have their own energy management displays, which I'm not familiar with. Tesla itself has improved the displays of energy consumption and predicted range. Uh, it's changed a great deal. It actually learns. Instead of giving me the predicted range based on normal driving, it very quickly identifies that I'm towing a trailer, that my consumption is roughly double, and it quickly compensates for the extra energy use by towing, even though it has no software that's tow specific or tow mode but it learns very quickly and it does give me pretty accurate within two or three percent okay good question there any other thing you'd like to add a question i didn't ask that you feel i know you covered a lot of stuff yeah. uh just on a general principle basis um i only did this now because i anticipated being retired and having all the time in the world to tow if i had two weeks vacation every year i probably would not have been towing with an ev i wouldn't have the time or the patience right. to do that we really need double the range uh, which is cut in half towing to make it at all on par with internal combustion the day will come when i don't know but i'm optimistic now that you've made the switch are you happy with all the extra work involved or planning involved are you okay with that uh at the time i'm dealing with the frustrations and having to unhitch absolutely not uh overall i am uh, the other thing i forgot to mention is that some of the chargers are in multi-level parking decks so if you have a bike and a kayak on top of your tow vehicle, not only do you have to unhitch your camper, but you have to take down your bike, your trike, your kayak, drive into the multi-level parking deck, charge your wow. vehicle, and put everything back in. Um, it's a design flaw in the charging system. It just doesn't take into account those of us who are towing and carrying sports gear. Wow. That's probably my biggest frustration. Okay. Cool. Well, you're quite an adventurer, uh, I must admit. I don't think, uh, I'm not retired, so I don't have the time to spend, uh, and I don't think I would want to at this point. So I guess the final question is, have you put a deposit down for that 800 kilometer cyber truck yet? <laughs> I did. Uh, I'm not sure I will get it. Uh, I love my Model 3. It can do everything for me except it does just doesn't have the range. Right. So I'm hoping not to have to resort to that. And uh, what big trip are you planning for this year for this? Uh, I'm returning to BC uh, and I'll spend more time in uh, Banff and Jasper National Park explore more of the sites. The, my first ever trip out west was really more uh, as a shakedown trip for EV towing over long distances with more focus on whether it can be done. Now that I know it can be done, I'll focus more on exploring the destinations and spending more time. And you might join us 
to the Yukon or Alaska? Uh, that's another bucket list item to drive the Denali and drive to Taktiakta, but definitely not with my Tesla. Right. It'll be a rental vehicle. Too many restrictions. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks again, uh, Victor. Um, it's always uh, fun to talk to you. You're so knowledgeable about uh, camping, not only just about EVs, but uh, camping. Uh, I learned a lot from you about camping in winter. We did do another video about that. Uh, check it out in the channel and there'll be more to come uh, as we tend to get together. We were actually just on a trip previously uh, to Salisbury Beach. I have a little montage on that as well. So it's good to get together and continue you, learning from you. Thanks Thank for you. sharing. My Appreciate pleasure. It.